travel guide to South America. Ben and I are going to Peru. Peru. And get this, Mum's paying. You know, Ben, I was the wicked older woman. You mean Ben and I were lovers for five wonderful years. You were absolutely fantastic today. I couldn't have asked for more. Same to you, boss. Good job. Absolutely. Sierra, how's the new place? Um, it's great. One of the bedrooms has its own external access and uh, ensuite. It's a bit like a motel room, only nicer, of course. <laughs> Sounds like teen heaven. Daniel must be stoked. Um, he hasn't actually seen it yet. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's just, um... Just time. He's busy. We're all busy. <laughs> I've got some space outside. Um, I was thinking about getting a barbecue, something modern and idiot-proof. <laughs> no, it's all about technique. Well, if you want uh, lessons, just ask the Samoan Tong Master. <laughs> 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 Sorry, but if you barbecue anything like you make chop suey, I'm glad it will be Sarah cleaning up and not us. Oh, come on, I was distracted by the game. Could have happened to anyone. So, Brooke, last I heard you were house hunting. How's it going? Good. I've seen a couple of nice places. Excellent. But everything that I can afford is snapped up by the time that I get there. I'm still looking. We have to move fast. That's what I did. Yeah, I realise that. Well, I'll keep my eyes open, and if I see anything, I'll shoot you an email, and I'd be happy to cover if you want to go for a viewing. Thank you. But I wouldn't dream of asking. Heather, do you understand what's going to happen tomorrow? I'm going to take out a kidney. Worst case scenario, I'm going to consult with another surgeon, but there is a possibility we'll only have to do a partial resection. You do what you need to do, Dr. Warner. Anything else you'd like to ask me? I don't think so. Okay. I'll let you get some rest then. Thank you. I suppose it's normal to feel nervous. Absolutely. Though I'm not sure what's given me more butterflies. The surgery or seeing Ben again after all these years. If you run into him, would you tell him I'm here? Sure. I've got several years on him. Ben's always seemed a mature kind of guy. That's exactly what drew me to him in the first place. So, how did you two meet? Can I ask it? Of course. He was door knocking, looking for extra work out of high school. Or well, so he said, but I think the real agenda was my 53 Beetle in the car board. <laughs> well, at least he's consistent. Older cars, older women. <laughs> anyway, I hired him to restore the car, and things kind of went from there. So, you knew from the start that there was something between you? No way. <laughs> Let's go somewhere else. Oh, no. Very good. Mm. And miss this? Yeah. I don't think so. Hi, guys. Hey, Laura. We're just getting some takeouts. No hurry, no. So, who haven't I met? And today's protest is? I'm taking the day off. I'm Scotty. I'm Lauren. Maxwell, you're the new girl at Sugar, right? And you're Sarah's new boyfriend. Maxwell and I are together. Really? Things change so fast. Sarah was just telling us about her new place, Daniel. It sounds lovely. You'll have to get over there and have a look. He will when he's ready. Well, do you want a drink? Sure. Oh, there's plenty of wine. Just grab a couple of glasses. Hey, can I please have a, um, a bourbon and coke and a wine glass for the table? Thanks. <sighs> Bit of a mess, eh? Break up. Sarah moving into a new place. And who asked you? No one. It's not about me. It's about you and your mum. So suddenly you're an expert on me and my mum? No, but I am on making mistakes. So is Sarah. At least he's trying to make things right. On my tap. So, whose party are we crashing? Oh, it's just a wind down after a hard shift. Hey, uh, thanks for the drink. I'm going to head home. Oh, I'll come with you. Thanks again. Pleasure. More for me then. See you at home. I'm going to come around tomorrow morning, if that's OK. Yeah, that'd be great.
Hey, Mum. Libby says you're off on holiday soon. Oh, just at the planning stage. South America, Peru. Well, make sure you get yourself a good travel agent. Get everything in place. There are guys out there who would rip you off as soon as look at you. I'll be careful. But it'll probably cost a bomb. I mean, but you've got some holiday pay owing, yeah? I'll need to break an investment. Libby did tell you I was going with Ben. Yeah, yeah, she did. I'll be paying for both of us. He'll see me right when he can. You know I met an ex of his last night? An ex? Of Ben's? Yeah. Yeah, her name's Heather Sloan. She's been admitted for surgery. She's really nice. See you later. Well? The room's pink. Not for long. I've bought the painting stuff already, but you notice the separate entrance in the ensuite? Well, you can get a flatmate, save yourself half the rent. The room is for you, it's not for anyone else. The outside door means that you could come and go as you please. I know how important it is to have your independence now that you're 18. You have your own friends, your own life. I'd just like to be a small part of it. Would I have to pay board? I'd be happy if you cleaned the place one morning a week. I am still your mother. <laughs> how long have you signed the lease for? Long enough. This is my home now, Daniel. I'm just letting you know that it could be yours too. Okay. I mean, not okay, I'll move on, but okay, I'll think about it. Well, take your time. Tanya's hardly spoken to me in weeks, and suddenly she's all smiles. Isn't that a good thing? I'm not sure. She sounded happy that Ben and I were going on holiday, and then she told me that his ex-girlfriend has been admitted for surgery. What? What ex-girlfriend? Heather Sloan. Apparently she's nice. Tanya sounded happy about that too, which makes me think that nice was code for young and gorgeous. Room 414. Hey? Heather Sloan, admitted last night. I'm not going down there to see her. Why not? What, what would I say? Oh, hi. I don't know if you've heard, but your ex is now dating a older woman. Well, obviously don't start with that. Just make up a name and say you've got the wrong room. Take something up with you. Like what? I only brought those in this morning. Well, do you want to scope her out or not, Yvonne? Yoo-hoo! Only me. I wondered how things went with Dan. He came round, right? Yeah, yeah, he's uh, been and gone. Ah. But he's thinking about moving in. Excellent. Hmm. Not kidding. I don't know what you said to him at the bar last night, but whatever it was, something's changed. Something good. I reminded him what a great mother he had. Though how that could have slipped his mind? Hmm. Hey. I better put the coffee on. Oh, sorry, there's no time. I've got to hang this and then slap some paint on the walls in Daniel's room, so... It sounds like you could use a hand. Thank you, but I'm, I'm fine. Fair enough. Well, uh, let me know if you need the uh, services of a strong, tall man. I will. Bye, then. Bye. <laughs> Ow! Ow! <laughs> don't you dare laugh at me. Y you sure you don't need a hand? The plan is to resect the tumour in some of the surrounding tissue. Since she already has reduced function in the other kidney, a partial nephrectomy would allow for the best outcome. I disagree. Given the size and shape of the tumour, I doubt you could leave enough fight with a kidney. You should go with a radical nephrectomy. That could leave her fully dependent on dialysis. I'm sorry, but a partial nephrectomy in time. Cheers. Ta. Hi. Hi. Oh, I had something to tell you. Um, and it totally slipped my mind. Do you hate it when that happens? Hi, Yvonne. Hi. I can't hold it open all day. Sorry. <laughs> I've spoken to my colleague and I've decided to proceed laparoscopically. My plan is to remove just the tumour and some surrounding tissue. Not the whole kidney? No, hopefully that won't be necessary. Sold. Pull me in. <laughs> the anaesthetist will be in to see you shortly. 
those for me? Oh, sorry, no. They're for Miss Sloan. I think she's just been wheeled out. I'm Heather Sloan. They are for me. How lovely. You're Heather Sloan? Yes. Who are they from? You? No. Uh, I, I don't know who they're from. Uh, they were just on the reception desk. Sounds like a cool place. Sure, it is. So grab the best room, shift your stuff in. It's not that easy. Yeah, it is. No, because if I move in with Sarah, then I'm choosing her over TK. But if I live with TK, then I'm choosing him over Sarah. And then there's Brooke waiting for me to move out so she can pounce. And I don't know what Maxwell's deal is, but he's... You're going to hurt yourself. It's so <laughs> obvious what you should do. Yeah, I know. You said move in with Mum. No, but the thing... I said shift your stuff in. Stake your claim. That doesn't mean you have to move out of TKs. Milk it, dude. Skip between them. That way you get out of all the chores and boring stuff because they're so happy just to have you there. You're good at this divorce stuff, aren't you? Okay, I'll come back tomorrow and do the second coat. No, I don't expect that. Well, it's obvious you need my help. Oh, is that right? Well, who's going to reach the ceiling? Mm -hmm. Um, anyone with an extendable roller? I'll ask some of the girls to come and help me. Mm, girls, eh? Yeah, girls can paint too. Okay. Name one famous female painter. Uh, ah. <laughs> you want to start this, do you? Hmm? Right. <laughs> Um... No, I need to say it. I'm the last thing you need. Well, who are you to tell me what I need? <laughs> Gerald sent me on a reconnaissance mission. You've been AWOL for a while. What's wrong? Nothing. So you've abandoned your post and your colleague to sit on this bench. OK, I'll sit with you. Oh, this is fun. I've just been chatting with a patient. She just found out that she's got cancer and now she's in for the op. I must have brought back memories for you. It'll probably bring back more for you. Her name is Heather Sloan. Uh, is she OK? She's coping. But... <laughs> She's lovely, actually. I can see why you two got along. I haven't told you about her. No. It never came up. Well, it's come up now. And I promise we'll talk later, but I've got to go and see Heather. I wrote heaps of letters. I didn't get them. I didn't send them. That's because I told you not to. <laughs> <laughs> you were such a homebody. You needed to get away, make a life for yourself. I suppose. So how's it been that you settled? Did you buy a house? Oh, are you kidding? They cost a fortune up here. I haven't even been on my OE yet. It's so good to see you, Ben. Double ditto. <laughs> I'd better go. You must see me tomorrow before the op. Give me good luck. I will, but no worrying. You know me. Can't help it. Hospitals. Oh, very good here. See you soon. Is it OK to have some documents couriered here? Of course it is. It's rather urgent. Can I have a phone, please? Hey, you, don't tell me you've finished thinking already. <laughs> Guys can make snap decisions too. Oh, mm. Can they? <laughs> I've decided I'm going to move in, if that's OK. And I thought I'd do some painting before my shift starts today. A decision and an offer of help. Wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Mark this day in history. I think I might have to. Um, but I've already done the base coat, so we don't need to do another one until tomorrow. Man, you were fast. <laughs> um, but maybe you could go and get some of your stuff instead. Was there someone else here? Hey, Daniel. I thought you said you guys weren't together. We're not. Well, that's not what you think, is it? All that stuff you said, it's not about me, it's about you and your mum. It's true. No, you were spinning me a line. You'd do anything to get in good with her. And didn't it pay off? I won't be needing that room anymore.
I shouldn't have come here today. I should have called. I would have if I thought for one second anything would happen with us. Well, that's life, isn't it? It's always ready to cuff you on the back of the head. Um, could I just have a little bit of time to myself now? Sure. Look, call me if you need anything. Ask Heather Sloan. She'll tell you she's still relishing the scandal. Oh. Did her and Ben have a good relationship? While it lasted. Well, how did it end? Now, there's a story. Ben was just out of high school when they met, and they lived together through his paramedic training. But as soon as he qualified, they split. Because? The romance died, apparently. Once she'd paid for all his study fees and living expenses, he took off. She never saw him again. And he never paid her back a cent. How do you know that? She told me. It makes her happy to think what a helping hand she gave him. Oh, that's all right then, isn't it? Once in a lifetime, maybe. But can you think of another older woman whose pain for everything was Ben? Say, breaking into her investments to fly him halfway around the world? You okay? <laughs> I'm just popping out to run some errands for Sophie. Who drank all the juice? Oh, I'll grab someone to go to the supermarket. I'm cooking tonight. Fettuccine, OK? I won't be here. Oh, really? Date with Lauren? You have to cook for us so I can wrestle something up. No, I want to. I really appreciate what you're doing for me. What are you doing for her? I'm just going easy till she finds a fit. Like I said, it takes time. Yeah, forever if you're not actually looking. No, she is. She saw a rental agent today. What, and? And it didn't work out on the spot, so I told her to hold fire till after Sophie's wedding. Oh. She's knocking herself out helping that girl. Get real, she doesn't care about Soph. All she cares about is staying here so she can worm her way back into your bed. How can you not see that? She'll be gone after the wedding. No, she won't. She'll spin you another line and, and you'll believe her. <sighs> as bad as Sarah. Ma, what's going on with her? What do you care? You know, more to the point, what do I care? You guys are both screwed. Okay. I told Heather I'd see her before surgery. I know, she wanted to wait, but we had to give her a pre-op meds. She's out to it. Oh, Heather, it's been oh, held up, but I'm here now. You can see her post-op. It's a straightforward procedure, right? Pretty routine by the sounds of it. Good luck. I'll see you soon. vindictive things that girl has done. No, this isn't like the complaint against Ben. I think Tanya's right. You've got to ask yourself, Mum, why didn't he tell you about Heather? Well, I don't make a habit of talking about my past relationships. Yes, you do. This is a bit more than a past relationship. Yeah, it's a pattern. He preys on older women. He helps himself to their money. It's not quite how I would have put it. It's what you would have meant. It was my decision to pay for the trip. Mine alone. Did he protest? He did, actually. But you were adamant. No, Ben, take my money. It's a loan. Well, I'm sure Heather thought that too in the beginning. For your information, everything about this trip was my idea. Where to go, when to go, the whole money thing, the lot. Really? Funny how I haven't heard you mention wanting to go on holiday. Not since before Christmas. Have you, Ma? Huh. So whose idea was it in the first place, hmm? Well, there you go. Come on, Libby, we've said enough. Come on in. I was going to call you, but you said you wanted time to yourself. 
Yeah, I've been doing some thinking too. About me, I hope. And Daniel? Have you spoken to him? Uh, he won't answer my calls or return my texts. I nearly went round to TK's, and but... And you ended up here instead. Well, I'm glad. I can't do this. That's what I came to tell you. Um, today was a mistake. Really? So, why did you do it then? I don't know. I just did. I, I was happy. Oh, so was I. That's what we do, Sarah. We make each other happy. Why give up on that? I have to put Daniel first. Well, he's not a kid. He's 18. He's got his own life, his own relationship. You can't let him stop you doing the same. What's the point of that? He's my son. He was ready to move in with me, and now he's walked out because he thinks that I lied to him. Well, then explain things. Tell him that we didn't plan today. It no, just... you're not hearing me. Um, I'm not going to explain anything except that I'm single, and I intend to stay that way for a long time. I'm going to tell him that his room is ready for him, and if he moves in, then it will just be him and me. And his girlfriend. Don't forget her. Or them. There's bound to be more than one, a young bloke like that. Well, I don't care. I want him with me, no matter how it goes. I can't lose him the way you've lost all that. I, I just can't. That's what I came to say. I'm not going to keep asking, Sarah. OK? I'm not going to keep reaching out to you. I know. No, I don't think you do. Because you keep on coming back to me. When things go wrong, I'm the one you talk to. And what happened today? You and me, Sarah, that was, that was magic. OK, I want more, and so do you. I have to make a choice. No, you don't. Daniel needs to grow up, and you need to do him a favour and let him. Just stay here, stay with me. No, I'm, I can't, I have to go. If you do, I swear that's the end of it. OK? We'll see each other at work, we'll talk business, but anything else, don't come to me. Don't even try and play the friendship card, we're done. Well, if that's the way it has to be, I'll see you. He thought he was safe. It's a speeding ticket from the night of the accident. But now... I don't think I can do this anymore. There's only one way out. What are you doing? Shortland Street. Next, TV2.